morning. Thank you, Father. We humbly come before you this morning. We just give thanks for who you are, Father, for all that you do for us, Father. I thank you, Father, for this day that um, that you've made today, Father. Uh, I thank you, Father, for uh, open eyes, ears, and hearts. I thank you, Father, for increasing our knowledge, understanding, Father, um, wisdom. Um, I thank you, Father, increasing our discernment, our revelation knowledge, Father. I ask, Father, that you will help us to apply your word, Father, so that we may glorify you. I thank you, Father, for supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I thank, thank you, Father, that you bless the work of our hands, Father. Uh, I thank you, Father, that you bless each and every woman on the line, Father, uh, their families, their businesses, everything they put their hands to may be blessed um, up above and beyond father what um they could imagine father i thank you father for the blessings over your um daughter and teacher yvonne father and thank you father that she is light in a dark place the head and not the tail above and not beneath um i thank you father for um for um for uh, for your goodness and your mercy um and I um, dispatch angels to go ahead of each and every one of us to prosper away. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Okay, so this morning we are diving into the book of Proverbs and Proverbs. And I'm so excited because there's so much there. And I cannot wait to just hear some of the amazing revelations you guys received from uh, reviewing the book of Proverbs. So I think we will start this morning with um, Emmy to see what Emmy got. Usually very good. So let's hear your stuff, Emmy. Good morning. Um, okay, so Proverbs, um, yeah, there's a lot in Proverbs. And um, <clears throat> I picked uh, Proverbs. 10, um, probably 10, it, um, well, in Proverbs, you know, a lot of time, um, it talk about the tongue, the mouth, and especially in Proverbs 10, it um, actually contrasts the righteous and the wicked, and it's also uh, focused on our tongue, our mouth, and um, <clears throat> It said that in Proverbs 11, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, and his word of wisdom are a source of blessing, but the mouth of the wicked conceal violent, violence and evil, and hatred stir up strife, but love cover and overwhelm all transgressions, forgiving and overlooking other fault. On the leaf of the discerning, skillful, and godly wisdom is fine, but discipline and the rod are for the back of the one who is without common sense and understanding. And also said that wise up store up uh, treasure, knowledge in the mind and the heart, but with the mouth of the foolish ruin it at hand. And even all the way up to the end of um, the chapter, it said that the mouth of the righteous flows with skillfully and godly wisdom, but the perverted tongue will be cut out, and the lip of the righteous know uh, what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked knows what is perverted. So it's talk about the tongue, talk about the mouth, uh, the importance of... Um, uh, what what is you know uh, uh, as a righteous person or as a person with wisdom? Um, a lot of time, you know, um, we might think that uh, we are smart in certain thing or we have wisdom in certain thing. But then, once we open our mouth, we actually people actually know that we, whether we are wise or not. Um, especially, I think, as a Christian, um, when we before we open our mouth to speak is important um, because we are the representative of the Father. 
uh, we are the ambassador of the Father. So we kind of like uh, the mouthpiece of the Father. So when we open our mouth, we need to be careful. Are we speaking life or speaking death? Uh, is our mouth um, a fountain of light or is a mouth is a mouth fountain of life is a source of blessing or are our mouth a source of cursing um you know to uh, uh curse people without we even knowing it um sometimes you know it's not just um i think it's also not just to uh, uh, the outside people, but also to our family. You know, we have to be uh, really be aware and be cautious about, you know, our tongue, our mouth, the thing that we speak. Are we speaking uh, wisdom from the heaven or, you know, we are speaking evil. We are speaking cursing, you know, uh, to others because when we do, what we do to others, we do to ourselves as well. So um, I think it's important to um, be aware that um, uh, our mouth flow with um, godly and skillful wisdom um, because otherwise the mouth can actually turn against us because it's a weapon. So we want to use this weapon uh, for good um, to advance the kingdom instead of use this weapon um, to attack and um, to destroy um, people and things around us. Um, that's it. Amen, amen. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Erica, let's hear what you have on your revelation. Okay, um, I got to Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Um, we must fully submit and trust our work and our activities to the Father. At the same time, we should consistently put forth effort um, on the task. If we allow the Father to guide us through the through the Holy Spirit, and we respond to His will, our plans will succeed. Um, but there are three ways to fail to commit our work to the Lord. So first, um, some people commit their work superficially. So they say a project is done for the Lord, but they are actually doing it for themselves. So there's um, selfish ambition. Second, others give temporary um, control of their of their plans but then they take control back um, once they notice that things are not going according to plan or the way they expect. And a third, many people fully commit their task to the Lord, but they don't put forth any effort. So I think it's that delicate balance between trusting in him um, and um, following through on his guidance and putting forth the 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 work or the effort and that's what i got amen good job thank you thank you deb can we be enlightened by you uh hello good morning <laughs> um wisdom 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 um i was listening to emmy right now and erica and i i think there's so many things that we can say and, and I just want to, I think what I, what I'm giving, what I want to share is from the father saying, you know, you, you must take the, you must decide it is your choice, whether you want to turn to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Because if what Erica's saying and what Emmy's saying is it's all embedded in where our heart is and whatever flows from our heart is what you're going to see. So I can't apply wisdom if I don't have understanding. So I must first go and seek understanding and God promises he will give it. And he says in Proverbs 2, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, if you look for it as for silver and search for it 
as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So it's a transference. God's giving me that knowledge. And if I can if I can sit in that belief, I'm gonna I'm gonna believe that he transmits from his spirit to mine his knowledge is and wisdom is in the knowledge wisdom is found in messages everywhere in uh, outside inside in relationships whatever wherever we're experiencing and the belief is that there is wisdom and do i choose to go the wise way and my my tongue will be the evidence in one clear way of where the condition is of my soul. Am I choosing wisdom or is, am I choosing a path, you know, of just of for destruction or, or dishonor. And it's just um, a mind and it's a mindset. And I'm just really, there's a, so, so many things that come with it. And I was just, grateful is just just to share is how to look for how we can look and say who gave us wisdom god is coming from god but he's sent out people in our lives and our relationships again where we can learn and apply understanding and i cannot provide wisdom unless i have the understanding and knowledge and and i just praise i just praise god for that because he is going to unfold that and unlock that for us and if we continue to seek him for that knowledge and it will flow from my heart my understanding will increase as i mature and as i apply what i've learned and to me that's what i keep hearing is the wise are prudent and they have learned and they make a choice and those choices give out the consequences and give out the fruit and it's the fruit, what we see from our mouth, from our actions, what Eric is saying, of what we applied and look at the blessings that then will come because we are living out the wisdom that God's given us. That's what I wanted to share. <laughs> I did a good job. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. So that's it. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's hear from Jen Dion. Morning. Wisdom and discernment, I think, is an interesting combination. We hear it a lot. There's so many things in Proverbs that talk about wisdom, and it talks about how valuable it is. To me, wisdom is something that you have attained through experience. So it, it means that I'm going to walk through something. It means that you are hopefully going to learn from that. And then that can lead to discernment, which is something that can keep you from a fall. It's something that you can give to someone else from your experience. I know it talks about guarding your heart because from that, you know, is where everything is going to flow that you do. I know that many times it talks about when you speak I, I know emmy was referring to the power of the tongue and and what you choose to do with that and deb alluded to the fact that wisdom is making a choice in a situation it's really important to be patient it's really important to think before you speak there was a verse that said better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control, and one who takes a city. And I find that, for example, for me, words are really, really powerful, and I have to be very cognizant of what I'm saying, um, because it is, it can be the, the thing of life that you speak to somebody else, and it can be the thing that just destroys like a minefield 
what was interesting to me in reading um, this verse is the fact that they're saying it's better to be patient than to be a warrior. And many, many times we get into trouble when we're caught up in emotion or when we're not paying attention to the things that we're saying. Those are the times where you really can set things in motion then you're not even cognizant of. It went on to say one was self-controlled and one who takes a city. I find that I have to ask many, many times for him to guard my tongue because if I get very, very emotional, I'm less and less paying attention to what I'm saying. So I thought it was interesting and a good reminder to me that when I feel, when I'm caught up in my emotion and I act on them before I really stop and even just take a moment to breathe, that that's a lot of times the time that I have done in a very quick amount of time so much damage that it takes me a very long time to to undo it or to make good on it. So I find that if whenever it is possible, even if it's a choice to make it possible to really breathe and to stop and listen to something someone is saying to me, especially if I feel as they're talking myself getting triggered, sometimes the best thing to do is just say, you know what, I'm not really sure or I, I'm not, I need to, to look into that and let me get back to you. Not because I don't necessarily have the wisdom, but I need the discernment from the Father to know how to respond in a situation so that it is speaking life and pouring in as opposed to just utterly destroying it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to go into um, the revelation that I received for all of us. And um, it's good that we all took time to go through it so we can share with each other. And so that's important. I want you to know that it's important when you share your revelation because what it does, it builds each one of us up. And then you also building yourself up as you share as well. So thank you uh, very much for doing that. So what I'm going to focus on for the book of Proverbs is 12 blessings, 12 blessings of the fear of the Lord, 12 blessings of the fear of the Lord. Now the fear of the Lord as covered, uh, in the, the retreat is one of the seven spirits of God. So the first one that I covered was the fear of the Lord. And so there's 12 blessings with just that one and the fear of the Lord uh, just means simply means to reverence God. It just means to reverence him. And so therefore, because it means to reverence God, your, um, your fear must be healthy. It must be good. It must be respectful and it must be driven by his love for you, not your love for him, his love for you. Too many of us think that our love for God is what sustains the relationship. And that's what makes everything work in our life. And that's how we get things done. And really what you want to focus on is God's love for you. When you focus on God's love for you, that fear of the Lord now is based on your knowledge of his love, his mercy, and his goodness in his life, in your life. So that means that you're, you pursue the knowledge of God. You pursue um, the understanding of his, his goodness, his mercy, his favor upon your life instead of trying to gain brownie points by prayer and fasting and, uh, you know, reading the word, thinking this is the reason for the relationship. It's coming from the mindset, you know, that I fear the Lord and I reverence him so much that I'm going to begin my perception of who I am as his love for me, pursuing me. And because he loves me, I reverence him. I, I respect him. I 
honor him. I'm coming from a perspective where he is uh, the first in my life instead of I love him and because I love him, I'm going to sacrifice this and I sacrifice that. And at the end of that, um, there is no relationship because it's one way. You're not realizing that his love for you is the foundation of the relationship. When we don't have the fear of the Lord, we end up with a lot of self-condemnation. So this is how you know you don't have the fear of the Lord, is that you will end up with self-condemnation, you will end up with a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, and a lot of unforgiveness. And we want to get to the point where we reverence the Lord so much where these things, self-condemnation, guilt, shame, unforgiveness, will not enter. We will not allow it to happen because of the fear of the Lord that you have within you, knowing that his love for you is the reason why these things should not happen. And so there's 12 blessings that happens to us automatically when we have the fear of the Lord. So number one, um, it is number one, the beginning of wisdom. So that's going to be found in Proverbs 1 verse 7. So being the beginning of wisdom, well, you break that down a little bit. Um, wisdom is knowledge applied. That's all it is. The knowledge applied push you into wisdom. Um, understanding is just repetition. So the more you repeat something, like you know, renewing the mind day and night, renewing the mind, reading the word of God day and night, listening to the word of God, all of that is how you build understanding. Understanding doesn't just come in an automatic. It's it's repetition. And space repetition, preferably, because um, what sh- the information you're getting today, which is the knowledge, the knowledge you're getting today is now going to take time for you to use it. So you have to apply this information you're getting today repetitiously through space repetition in order for it to turn into wisdom. So understand, number one is it is the beginning of wisdom. And I get wisdom through applying what I learn repetitiously through space repetition so that I can flow in wisdom. Now, in in regards to that also, the knowledge now that you have last week and the week before, uh, knowledge is added to knowledge. So if you receive knowledge and you do not apply knowledge, you're basically in a state as if you never just never got anything. So all you have is information. Okay. So all you have is information. So you can read five books, six books. You can listen to the word of God. You can read the word of God, but until you learn how to apply the knowledge repetitiously, you just have information and how you know you just have information now is that you are unable to apply this to your life. So you, you heard the sermon, you heard the the Bible study, you heard, you read the word of God, you read the books, but there's something in you that causes you not to apply. And that's because you have not learned the process of developing the understanding by applying it when after you get it. And you have to apply it, I would say, and I always talk about this, within 24 hours of getting any new information, the goal is to create a plan how you're going to apply that through space repetition over the next, I would say, seven days. I preferably would say if you really want it to stick with you, to keep you in wisdom, you want to apply it for 90 days on some fashion. So all of these 12 things that you're getting right now, you want to be able to say, okay, I'm going to take even one and I'm going to apply it skillfully for the next 90 days so that I can move into wisdom just on that one thing because it's knowledge applied to knowledge. Number two is um, it determines, these are the blessings now, it determines destiny. So because I have this healthy fear of the Lord 
and I have such reverence and I have such, uh, I would say, you know, awe of who he is and how much he loves me, then I'm able now to discern his destiny for me. I'm able to discern that there are certain things that I need to know and apply in my life daily so that I can move into the destiny he's called me for. It's, it's really a crazy thing when you're on the planet and you have no clue what your purpose is. And because you have no clue what your purpose is, it just simply means I have knowledge that God has given me that I haven't applied in a space repetitious way. That's all it means. And so without purpose, you abuse yourself, you abuse your time, you abuse other people's time, you abuse everything around you because you do not know the purpose you were called for. So again, because I fear the Lord now, I am going to be in alignment and I want mm -hmm. to know what my destiny is, what God has called me for. And that you can find in Proverbs 1 verse 29. And number three, the third blessing is it helps us to depart from evil and that's proverbs 3 verse 7 so departing from evil an easy way to for you to understand that because we think um you know murder is evil um you know killing and all of this and all the craziness that's happening out there but let's bring it back to something simple it is evil to think negative thoughts about yourself or anybody else it is evil to feel negative emotions about yourself and about other people so bring it to that level and apply the knowledge at that level so when you are when you have the fear of the lord you will not allow negative emotions and negative thoughts to overpower you because the fear is so strong in you and the reverence you have for the lord you will recognize how love you are, are loved, you are by him, where you know no matter what you do, you can never separate God's love from you. The other way is you thinking that because you did something wrong, that or you call it wrong, <laughs> right? You believe now that God has left you. And that's where we get into the self-condemnation, the guilt, the shame, and the unforgiveness. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But I only have that knowledge turned into wisdom when I understand that the fear of the Lord is what brings that to me. When I fear the Lord, I will never, ever allow my thoughts to tell me that God has left me. God doesn't want to speak to me. God is not speaking to me. God is upset at me. God must be mad. All of that comes from evil within the heart and those are the negative thoughts number four the blessing is um it is to you hate evil you begin to hate it uh proverbs 8 13 one of the things when you fear the lord is you detest it you hate evil you will never allow and they, you capture every negative thought. You capture it and make sure it obeys. It obeys the fact that God's love for you protects you. God's love for you is what's going to cover you. No matter what you are doing, there is no evil that's coming into your life that God will not protect. See, that, that's, you have to just protect that and guard your mind against any negative thought that comes to destroy you, comes to fight you, come and it, and again, it has to come to you. Why? Because you have to develop the fear of the Lord. That is the basic thing of all of this. You have to get the fear of the Lord as something that you put in your armor to fight against the thoughts that come to destroy you. And know that's why a negative thought show up. You read the Bible. You prayed, you fasted, you did all those things. Now, let the test begin. We must be tested on these thoughts that we let coming in, sitting down and taking over. And we think we have no responsibility. You have a responsibility to fight 
back in your mind, not in the physical, not against people, not against flesh and blood. In your mind, you must allow the test to happen to reset to the fact that, you know what? God loves me. God loves me. When you look at King David and, um, you know, how many women he slept with and all the things that he did and all of that, and yet he never told himself that he wasn't loved by God. As a matter of fact, we have the whole book of Psalms where he confessed and professed with love letters of how much God loves him. <laughs> this is even in his state. And that's why he was who he was to God. His fear of the Lord was so intense that he made sure he separated the fact that his actions and all of the negative things that he did, God still loved him. And he wasn't doing anything to please God uh, in, that, in that respect. It was God's love that allows him to please God. It's God's love that allows him to confess the things that he did. It's God's love that allows him to recognize that, you know, uh, he is the king because of God's love. So once you understand everything you do that is good is going to be because of God, you will begin to fight those thoughts and uh, not allow them to overpower you. Number five, it's prolonged days, prolonged days. And it's uh, Proverbs 10, verse 37. And that is just, you know, giving you kind of like this it has to do with long life. Number six, it gives strong confidence, gives strong confidence, which is, again, Proverbs 14, verse 26. Now, a lot of us um, are constantly looking for that word confidence. And we have several uh, individuals who will take courses just on how to be more confident, confident in life. And what we don't realize is that it comes from having the fear of the Lord and not just any kind of confidence. It says strong confidence. So if you really want to develop strong confidence in every area of your life, develop the fear of the Lord. And what does that mean? I am just going to remind myself every day that it is God's love that allows me to have the friends that I have, to have the business that I have, to have the family that I have, to have the things in my life. It is God's love for me. And there's no one else that can give that to me. Yes, God will use a human being to release that to you because everything belongs to the Lord. But understand that I must have that reverence for God's love. And this is how he's taking care of me at this time. And number seven, um, it is a fountain of life, which is beautiful. That's uh, Proverbs 14, verse 27. Uh, number eight, it produces satisfaction. So interesting enough, we have a lot of us who um, are unsatisfied in certain areas in, in our lives and about what we're doing. And uh, this is letting us know it is a blessing when you fear the Lord. This is the blessing that comes that you have satisfaction. You know, it comes from, it doesn't, you can't buy this. It doesn't come from the outside. It comes from God's love for you. It produces, it produces produces satisfaction in your life so the goal is to stop looking for outside sources to bring satisfaction stop looking for people around you to bring it they cannot and if they do it's a temporary band-aid for where you're at the fear of the lord produces this at a higher higher level where now you can operate on the earth without feeling that somebody is pulling your strings and pulling this and pulling that because they cannot bring satisfaction without you having the fear of the Lord. And it's God who tells them. <laughs> God is the one now, because you fear him, he tells, he speaks to his creation to be a blessing to you in the area that you need. But you can't go to them directly. They don't have it without the Father telling them. Number nine, uh, it is the instruction of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is being instruct instructed now into the wisdom. And so you're looking at Proverbs 15, verse 33. 
So just imagine he's using the fear of the Lord as an instruction. Like, I'm going to sit. I'm going to be in awe. I'm going to get the knowledge of his love and his goodness and his mercy and use that instruction to help me grow more confident, to help me grow in inner fulfillment. And that, again, is just number nine, the blessing of the fear of the Lord. Number 10, it tends to life. It tends to life. That's Proverbs 19, verse 23. So this blessing now is interesting because um, either something is dead or alive in your atmosphere. So some of us, we have uh, relationships and sometimes those relationships are, are dead or they're alive. And when you have the fear of the Lord, your relationships, they tend to life, right? So pay attention to not just relationships that are dead or alive, but, you know, projects. You know, we have projects, we have business, we have ideas. And, you know, with the fear of the Lord, it, it will produce life. It will bear fruit. And just pay attention that the things that you are involved with, that life is in it. You know, that means I have to sit with the Father to figure out, you know, how can I increase my ability to bring more life to that project or bring more life to that relationship? If the relationship is not growing, it's going to die. And when it dies, it, you know, it, it's not that it's a bad thing. So some of us, it's a good thing when some relationships die. <laughs> but the goal is you want to, if, you, if there's something you want, understand that life comes from the fear of the Lord. And that means I have to guard my thoughts, my ideas, my action, my emotions about that thing, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a business, whether it's an idea, I have to guard it because I want it to live. I want it to bear fruit. I want me to bear fruit on a daily basis in some fashion. Okay, I, uh, there's a there's a you know a thing I, I want to. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to teach it, but it's about the walking dead. You know, we're walking around dead and we don't even know we're dead because we do not fear the Lord. Number eleven. Uh, gives riches, it gives honor, and it gives life. And so that's Proverbs 22, verse 4. Uh, gives riches, gives honor, and gives life. Uh, There's just so many things that the fear of the Lord produces. And for those of you who are looking for, uh, you know, to be rich and all of that, it's, it's right here. It's in the fear of the Lord. And number 12, it brings blessings, uh, it brings a blessing. And so Ecclesiastics 8, verse 12 for that one. And uh, what I would suggest um, after uh, you, you've written all of this down, you know, take one, take one that resonate with you and apply it immediately. Create some kind of plan, even if it's to look up the definition uh, of that, that one thing you want to learn. And um, look at the definition, not just in one language, in several languages. Just imagine your ability now to understand God on another level, but in different languages. Uh, then you can say, okay, well, one week, this is what I'm going to do. Another week, I'm going to um, create sentences with it on trying to understand it a little deeper. I'm going to also meditate on it. I'm going to create a mantra. I'm going to create an affirmation. I'm going to use it and turn it into questions one week. So there's so many ways to apply the information you get. So just to receive information and then that's it. You go to sleep. Forget it. You're just going to be at the information level and you're going to find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over. And in that case, when you are being tested, because you have to be, only thing that can come up is self-condemnation, guilt, and shame, and uh, unforgiveness. So we'll take questions now. Yvonne, can I get you to repeat um, a few of the verses for each one? Which one Number would you like? three helps uh, us depart from evil. Proverbs 3, verse 7. Okay. Number 
5, long days. Uh, Proverbs 10, verse 37. Number 6. Uh, Proverbs 14, verse 26. I'm sorry, Proverbs 13, verse 26. 14, 14. 26, number 7. Uh, Proverbs 14, verse 27. And then number 8. Uh, Proverbs 15, verse 16. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions, guys, about the study? Everybody got this. That's good. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, I just want to have a comment on it. Okay. Um, actually, um, well, last night, uh, you know, a few hours ago, um, <laughs> I was watching a Netflix. It's, uh, it's called Father's Jew. Uh, it was in a the movie theater not long ago. It's by Mark Wahlberg. There was actually a lot of... Uh, uh, famous stars i was actually kind of uh, surprised to see all the familiar faces in the movie so uh father stewart you know by the name of the movie is a catholic movie i mean the movie about um, the catholic priest and um i was watching it and it is about this guy who um his life was so you know uh so going downhill and of course you know in the movie there's a lot of cussing a lot a lot of cussing i was like oh my god but that's who he was and but because of that because of who he was god actually turned it around for good and in the movie because just now you were talking about fear of the lord and uh all the 12 things that you were talking about and suddenly it just ta um kind of uh, you know remind me of this movie immediately about this guy father Stewart. he has the fear of the lord he is not only just love god but he completely know god love him god love him who he is god love him who he was and every step of the way because of the fear of the lord it's not because he's afraid of god it's because he honored and reverend and love god and he know that god loved him so much no matter what he did before that you know uh, uh his failure all this thing and he completely really i mean in the movie it really showed that you know he doesn't even care about all this condemnation and guilt and shame and he's completely just give it to god and even though this is, you know, kind of talking about the Catholic, the priest, but I think that, you know, um, take the religious aside, it's about him, the person, Father Stewart. And um, yeah, when you talk about this uh, 12 thing, and it just stuck me that he, he has the fear of the law. And, and, and it's not very easy for everyone, for anyone of us, I mean, even for myself, that you know to have all these 12 things and to to really understand the fear of the lord because sometimes you have to go through really uh, uh testing right you need to go through uh, uh, uh a trial you need to go through all these things in life to really find out the fear of the lord it's not to afraid of god but it's to know his love for you no matter what and i mean i recommend this movie but again there's a lot of cussing in the movie so if you're not doesn't like that kind of thing then probably not good for you but aside from the cussing aside from the religion of catholic uh, catholicism uh, i think this is a really good movie and um you know about if you want if you want to understand what is mean by fear of the law i think this is a good movie to to watch that's it thank you Amy. thank you appreciate that anybody else um, can you go into a little more into fountain of life Fountain of Life. Uh, that's number seven. That's a little deeper, Erica. Well, I have oh. you today. We'll go through that. Yeah, okay. that's deep. That's okay. not just one second right here. Okay. Okay. Thanks. But remember that today when I see you, we can go through that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, anybody else? Um, Yvonne, based on what Emmy said, I, I have a question. Okay. So. Because the first thing in, in listening to you that I had to work through was the word fear in this 
is reverence is what I'm getting because my first thought of fear was you need to fear the Lord. Like you need to hold him in esteem and know that he's all powerful on all of these things. And yet everything that you've given us through the blessings show that it's not that he's blessing you because you hold him in reverence. It's, it's because he loves you. Yes. And I find myself like if I overhear somebody talking, let's say it's, it's one of my kids or my husband and you know, they, you know, it says you don't want to speak double sided out of your mouth where in one hand you're blessing the Lord and the other hand you're cursing, for example. And then they start gaming and they're cursing. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, like, how am I going to cover this? Like, Father God, I'm so sorry. But in listening to what Emmy said, as far as this, this individual who, you know, curses a lot, but that's who he is. And he just does not feel any condemnation because he knows that there's nothing that God, that he can do that God won't love him for. Is that when you talk about using this new knowledge, if you are coming into something where if you hear someone blaspheming or you hear someone gossiping, I know I can already hear you going, well, that's, that's you because it's in your awareness. But when you're in the midst of it and it first happens, I've always wondered how do I cover them? What do I say to really, or how do I just take it in but not hold on to it? Is that through this? Right, right. Through the fear of the Lord, right. Through, like, you know, like when somebody, when you say it, cover them, you know, the question is, why do you need to cover them? You know what I mean? Because they're loved. They're already, there's nothing you can do um, to um, cover these people that God has, has not already done. He's the one covering them, you know, with his love for all of us. He covers us in spite of ourselves. And so when you when you see someone in a, in a negative state, your job is not to cover them. You know, that's not your job. You should come from the state of mind that they are covered. God loves them. Come from that, you know. Uh, God loves them as who they are, and their relationship with God will plan out. There's many times, and I think that's what Emmy was talking about with this movie. There's many times we see the person who's cursing and, you know, and just look like they're going to hell. And that's the one who actually have the most reverence for God because they know their love. Then you have the ones who, the religious ones who, uh, they read the Bible, go to church, do all the stuff, pay the tithes and everything. But yet they consistently condemn themselves. They condemn themselves, they put themselves down, and they put others down because they think, you know, that they are right. They're in the right standard. You know, I, I've got to fear the Lord, and that's the negativity of it. So you have to look at um, when you can be yourself, make your mistakes, and still know without a doubt that God loves you, you're in alignment with the fear of the Lord. And you also will allow other people to make their mistakes without judging them and condemning them. That's the fear of the Lord. Anybody else? <laughs> yes. Joyce, here we go. Um, as we were studying this, there is something uh, something interesting that um, I learned. Uh, may add on, and it will be a question later. And most of the times, in my culture, I believe, let me say this, we have a statement that says, when you tend to familiarize with a person, you tend to start losing, I think I'll call it fear, or respect, those two things. And what am I trying to say? When, for example, you t there is a friend or a boss. Let me put it. No, this is where we're gonna. Get, I think I'll get this from. When you have your boss, and um, maybe this boss is so friendly and chats with you and stuff like that, you make jokes with this person. With time, if you tend to have so you familiarize with this person so much, if you're not careful, you may cross the line. Yes. And and, and when we do that, you cross the line. You're gonna do things that don't add up. Or you're going to say something, 
you disrespect sometimes. And I noticed or I realized that even in us as human beings, when it comes to the spiritual, our relationship with God, we yes. tend to familiarize ourselves with God and we start losing it. And then the fear that we are learning here, we lose it. Yes. And I'm thinking yeah. that a lot of times the things we are doing causes us to lose this all these things that they've been that you've broken down for us to fear the Lord the good way or the respect. You're used to God like, you know what? Um God is all knowing. He knows me. He knows my weaknesses. He kn- we always say um he knows even before I ask him. So he knows who I am. Then sometimes you're like you will not ask, but remember they tell us be um as you're persistent in prayer, uh what can I call it? Um when you pray, ah, the word, I'm sure of the word, the word is out of me. Be straight, uh, not even straightforward, be uh, precise. Speak it as it is. Tell him, don't just beat around the bush. Let me put it that way. Don't beat around the bush. Tell him exactly as it is. But then sometimes you take it for granted that because he knows you, so be it. He will give me, he will be, he'll give me whatever I need. So be it because he knows who I am. And then we start losing these things slowly by slowly. And yeah. well, to do this. So that is something I learned um, out of this. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Um, uh, it, we get to the point sometimes that we, um, we think that our love for God is the priority. <laughs> and we, our ability to love God is so low. We can't even love God without God's love for us first. We have to receive his love. Like he tells you, I loved you first. I chose you. And so once you meditate and apply that knowledge that it is God's love that allows me to love, then you are developing the fear of the Lord. So if there's, you know, for example, someone that you're having a difficult time with, um, it's because you haven't received a higher level of God's love for you. That's why you cannot care for that person at that level that you desire or you want them also to give back to you. And so the fear of the Lord is is kind of like I would say there's levels in it. And so um, based on my work, my work of applying the knowledge of his love. So it says that you know, the fear of the Lord is based on our knowledge of his love, his mercy, and his goodness towards us. When I meditate on these three things at a diff- at different levels throughout my life, for example, so maybe uh, I could come back to this maybe every, every quarter, and Uh, For one month, I will focus on God's love, God's mercy, and God's goodness. But the goal is to rise, to rise, and to raise the level of his love operating in my life so that I can now operate at a higher level of love in the lives of other people that he's put in my care. Because it's all about, you can see how some people struggle in opportunities, in relationships, and the assignments that God gives us based on the fact that we don't have enough of God's love to produce the fruit that he's asking us to produce or the fruit that we want to produce because we have not spent the time to meditate on his goodness in our lives his mercy it is the mercy of god that even have us right now on this phone right now as a group it is the mercy of god but if i don't see it that way if i think that i am sacrificing my time to attend this bible study online at 5 a.m and because i'm sacrificing my time then god owes me or god is going to bless me that is now not fearing the lord One more question, if we have it, or one more uh, statement. If not, we're going to close out here. We got somebody, Regina? Yes, I have a question. Okay. So thank you so much for this teaching. Um, and I guess the way that I can renew my mind is 
through the um, steps that you said, but what I find is, like I've been trained in church for so many years to see myself as a sinner and see myself as filthy rags and all of these things that I never really had the complete understanding of God's love because of the way that I've identified myself. Mm -hmm. And um, so I guess the question is, what are some other things I could do on a daily basis? I know you said write the things in different languages and meditate on the word of God, but um, like I know this intellectually, I just seem to. It's not in the heart, right, right. So that's the applied knowledge now. Okay. So I have to apply it, get it into space repetition where, um, for example, there is there's a song, um, and I will send it to you, and it, it talks about uh, God's love. So you can use, you know, even a song to deposit. So say you, you know of an artist that who sings about God's love, not your love, but God's love for you, right? Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, I'm going to apply this. So you listen to that song, and I remember uh, this song that I'm going to send to you. I remember um, for hours, hours just listening to that. So I had, because I wanted to deposit his love into my heart. So I had, I had to put the time in <laughs> to apply the knowledge that was coming. And I would spend hours listening to this one song. And uh, for the whole time, I just cried. I just cried the whole time. What was I doing? I was releasing. My soul was releasing and allowing God's love to go inside as wisdom. No longer as information, but as wisdom. Okay. And I I never have to do that again. It's funny because once I did that, it shifted everything for me, knowing that there's nothing I can do uh, that God will not be there for me. And there's no mistake that I can make that's so great that I need to punish myself, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? So, but I, that, but that means I had to do the work and I would look up all the scriptures about God's love for me. And I, as there was a, a, um, I looked up all the sermons and all the Bible studies that were there. I asked God to lead me to someone that had, you know, picked up this revelation of God's love for them that's who I want. I wanted somebody who already had it. And uh, because they can't transfer it to you if they don't have it. It's going to be on the superficial level, which is just information. So for something like this, you want to ask the Father to lead you to individuals who have the understanding at the wisdom level of God's love for them. And it's applied. You can see it in their lives. You know what I mean? There's no condemnation about anything. They just flow and realize that without God's love, they are not the person that they would have been right now. And because of God's love, uh, that's why they still have a family. Because of God's love, this is why they have a business that is successful. So that's a mindset coming from the applying the knowledge that you get. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sweetie. Oh, I just want to um, add one more thing. Um, I think a lot of time uh, we feel like, okay, we love God so that we need to love others uh, because that's what the Bible said. That's what the church teach, you know, so we need to show our love of God, to, you know, to to people. So it, it's like it's doing it from us. But I think that, you know, based on what we learned today, um, our love is not enough for God. It has to receive from Him and not flow through us. So if we love other people because we love God, it's like a duty. It's like we actually don't really want to love people around us but because we have to love it because I have to show people I have to show right. myself that I love God right, right? it's a right. duty it's a transactional right. but when you come from the point of view that no it's not 
my love for God. It got love for me so that I love other. That is completely it's a completely different level, just like what you said that there's different level of fear of God. So it's a different level of fear of God that it actually is a is a um is a transformational, it's a relationship, it's not a transaction, it's not a business that, okay, God, I'm doing this just for you. It's like, it's a mandatory thing. It's a duty thing that even if I don't like it, I have to do it, you know, but when you're coming from understanding and knowing the fear of God is actually reversed. It's from his love to me so that I can share the love uh, for other because I have so much, I'm so full that I need to share for other the love he has for uh, the love he has for me so that that is the turning point i think that is a completely you know different uh level of uh of love so yeah that's my god mm -hmm. no it's good it's good and, and and you're so grateful you know like when you think of us receiving this information right now it is it's his love right his love for us saying okay i want my children to learn that my love for them is what i'm looking for operating in their lives not their love for me because our level of love like you said Amy, is is not good enough it's too low it's when you focus on his love you can now love at a whole nother level where you will not you know, even uh, gossip. You won't even condemn other people when they make a mistake. You will actually end up just um, just loving on them even more, knowing that they're coming closer to understanding that no matter what they do, God loves them. And with that love is how they're going to overcome all the negativity, all the self-condemnation, all of the guilt, the shame, the unforgiveness. It is with his love that we can do those things. Outside of that, you are going to pay a heavy price because it is his love that keeps us going. So we're so grateful that he loves us so much that we can get this information and that we can share with each other, that we can even love on each other just by hearing what each other is saying and knowing that it is God speaking through each one of us to give us what we need for the day and for the week. So that's what we have to realize and be grateful for that his love is so powerful, so strong. And the more of God's love that you have is the more powerful your relationship with others will be. So we're going to stop here and ask Kimberly to lead us out. Then we'll go into Linda. Good morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We just magnify your name, Father. We thank you, Father, for who you are, the only wise God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of mercy and grace, the God who forgives all of our sins, the God who is slow to anger and full of loving kindness, the God who sent his only son to cover every sin, past, present, and future. Father, we just lift you up and we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you, Lord, that your word says, wherever two or more gather, there you are in the midst of us, and anything that we shall touch and agree upon, you hear us and it is done. Father, we thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for your word, for the book of Proverbs, for all of that wisdom, that short pack, 31 chapters of wisdom, God. We thank you, Lord, that we were able to meditate on it, speak it and obey it father because you said if we do those things then everything we do will prosper father we love you with all of our heart mind soul and strength and we thank you that you love us even before we loved you we thank you lord that we are growing in the knowledge and the width mm -hmm. the depth the height of your love father mm -hmm. we thank you that we are receiving your love we thank you lord that we reverence you in a pure reverence. Reverence, teach us how to truly reverence you in our own personal relationship with you, not in a religious way, not in a way that um, is only superficial or hypocritical, but in a way that is pure, Father, that we can be honest before you and say, Father, I need your help. Father, forgive me, Lord, as your um prayer says in the Lord's prayer that we are always to confess our sins because we sin without even knowing. So Father, forgive us for every word, every thought, every action that was unholy, unrighteous, and untrue. And we forgive everyone 
that has ever hurt us in the past, present, and future because we guard our hearts, Father. We guard our hearts and we love you in the hard times. We love you even when you tell us no. We love you even when we go through the fire, even when we're being persecuted and treated unfairly. We still love you because we know that you will bring justice, that justice is around the corner, that we wait patiently for you, that we are patient with you just as you are patient with us. Father, and we thank you that we have the authority to cancel every plot and plan and word of the enemy against us, our family, and anything that pertains to us against the body of Christ. We cancel it in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you that we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And no weapon ever formed against us shall ever prosper. And any tongue that rises up against us in condemnation is condemned, for this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. We thank you for the continued wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to obey you, God, to love you, Father, in everything that we say and do. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our heart always be holy and acceptable to you father may everything we do come from a pure place to please you may we keep you first and your word says father if we love you that we will obey you so father give us the strength the courage the knowledge the wisdom and the understanding the revelation and the discernment the favor and the victory the deliverance and the truth to always walk in love and to obey you, Father. You said that the, the obedience gets the full reward, the reward of, of having your enemies be scattered, the reward of our bodies, the fruit of our bodies being blessed, the reward, reward that our ground and cattle will be blessed, Father, that we'll be blessed coming and blessed going, blessed in the city and blessed in the field, that we will receive our due um favor and rain in our season, God, that our bread and our fruit will have supernatural blessings. We thank you for the supernatural power. We thank you for all of the women on the line, Father, for all of their knowledge and for sharing and for loving and being in the true fellowship of the body of Christ. We just thank you, Lord, for a blessed week, a productive week, a week where we'll go above and beyond our expectations, where everything we'll put our hands to will be prosperous and blessed. We thank you that the beauty of the Lord rests upon us and you are establishing the work of our hands. We thank you that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so we are choosing wisely to speak life to what your will is and we speak death to the will of the enemy. We thank you, Lord, for this authority through the word and we ask you to always speak through us and guide us with our words, Father. Now unto you who can go above and beyond all we can ever ask or think according to the Holy Spirit within us, may your name be glorified forever and ever without end. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Linda. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I thank you, Yvonne, for that uh, amazing study. I appreciate it.